So I'd like to go over some of the properties of exponents that we're going to need to be successful in Chapter 11. These properties work for Chapter 11 and any other chapter where we deal with exponents. First, let's get our vocabulary down. I need to know what the base is and what the exponent is in the expression a cubed. Actually, I need you to know it. a is the base, so the base is the part being raised to the power, and 3 is the power, or you might use the word exponent. Notice that the exponent only applies to the piece that's immediately to its left. So, I have six properties to go over. The first four are, if you multiply like bases, you add their exponents. So if I have a cubed times a squared, the bases are like, they're both a's. To get the final result, I add the exponents. 3 plus 2 is 5. If you divide like bases, a to the seventh divided by a cubed, you subtract the exponents. Again, a and a, they're like bases, so subtracting the exponents, a to the seven minus three, a to the fourth. Powers to powers. The square applies to the parentheses. What happens is I multiply the two times a to the And then, lastly, on this page, if I have a power and it's applied to a product or a quotient, so up here I said that the 3, the power, only applies to what's immediately to its left, unless you put it in parentheses. So if I have a product, a times b, and that's to the fourth, that 4 can pop in and apply to both pieces. a to the fourth times b to the fourth. It also works for a quotient. So if I would have a over b to the third, I can rewrite that as a to the third divided by b to the third. Be very careful with your notation at this point. Notice that I've tried and I'm using a marker so it's a little bit harder. The 5 is a power. It is not the same thing as 5 times a. The 4 is an exponent, not the same thing as 4 times a. So make sure that you can tell on your writing if it's an exponent or if it's a coefficient. So the other two properties that we need to deal with are if you have a negative exponent and if you have a zero power. So negative powers, x to the negative n, the way we do with deal with negative signs and exponents is I think of them as tickets across the division line. So x to the negative n is the same thing as 1 over x to the positive n. As it goes from the top to the bottom, and if you don't see the bottom, go ahead and stick a 1 under x to the negative n. The x travels across and it gives up its ticket, and now it's x to the positive n. If you do that with numbers, so 5 to the negative 2, 1 over 5 to the positive 2. Notice it doesn't change the sign of the 1 fifth. It just, you change the sign of the 2 when it goes across, and then 5 squared. If you would have a fraction, 2 thirds to the negative third, it flips the entire fraction. 3 halves to the positive third. Everybody moved across, going from bottom to top or top to bottom. The 3 gave up its sign. Now I'd have 3 cubed divided by 2 cubed to get 27 eighths as a simplified. Last property is the zero power, and it looks like this. a to the zero equals 1 for all numbers except, and I'll put this in parentheses, maybe 0. And I'm going to tell you that you're not going to have to worry about this exception until you get to Calc 2, so let's not worry about it for now. So if you have 7 to the 0, it's 1. If you have 13 to the 0, 
it's 1. If you have a, b, c to the 0, that's 1. The only time I want you to be careful, ready? If you have negative 6 to the 0, and I should say that differently, the 0 is only applied to the 6. It's not applied to the whole thing. So you would do the exponent first. Remember your order of operations. 6 to the 0 is 1, and then you apply the negative sign. So this is negative 1 as opposed to the whole number negative 6 in parentheses to the 0. This is positive 1. 